5 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Painting minis can take a lot of time, but is it worth it? Hi, my name is Daydam and today we'll talk about what's a good enough paint job for you. I will admit this, I'm a slow painter. I like paying attention to tiny details trying to get the mini to look as good as possible regardless of what I'm painting it for. So, in order to improve my times and to show myself that I don't need every single detail to be amazing, I decided to tackle my local painting community's challenge for this month, to paint a mini in two hours or less. For this project, I'm using a tiny goblin sculpted by Chester Mask. I'm leaving the link both to his Patreon and YouTube channel in the video description below. Now, the first step in speeding up my process will be to plan accordingly. I'll start by base coating everything and then applying a wash to increase contrast. After that, I'll work on the main details to make sure they pop. And finally, and if I have enough time, I'll add highlights to the less important stuff to make it even prettier. I know the plan doesn't sound too detailed, but I'm just trying to set the basis for this speed painting project. I don't want to plan every single brush stroke, but rather avoid doing extra work. Now that we have a plan, let's get to it. I'll start by base coating the skin with goblin green, the cloth with red leather, and the back of the arm thing is, yes that's how they're called, don't google it, just trust me, with German medium cut something brown. Seriously, why does this name have so many abbreviated words? Now we'll finish base coating by applying some black paint on the metallics as a base for our next color, gun metal. This will ensure that the effect of the metallic paint will show nicely and evenly on the mini. Oh, let's not forget to paint the teeth and the eyes. Now that everything is base coated, it's time for step 2. Washing. No, we are not washing the mini. We are applying a special paint called a wash. This step is pretty simple. We just grab a wash called Null Noil and slather it onto the mini. The wash will sink into the recesses, making them darker and increasing the contrast. If I see it starts pulling too much on a certain area, like this will buckle right here, I can simply dab it with a dry brush and the wash will be absorbed into the bristles. I can then deposit that wash into a different area or discharge it into a paper towel by dabbing the brush on it. After that, I can go back and absorb more from the mini if needed. After this quick step, it's been just over an hour, meaning I have another hour left to finish the mini. And now it's time for step 3. Details. This is the step that will make the mini look cool. I'll be focusing on the main things I want the people to see, the face, the shield and the sword. I'll start by adding some elven skin tone to my base screen, making the goblin's nose and inside of the ears more interesting. This will also help us attract the viewer's attention to the mini's face. After that, I'll reinforce the muscles on the body with the base color on raised areas, since washes tend to dull down the base coat a bit. Now comes the fun part, metallic highlights. This is a bit more advanced than the previous steps and it's not necessary at all since the paint is already metallic and it will reflect like nicely. I just consider it a part of my own style. I love reinforcing the highlights and shadows of metallics at certain areas to make them stand out no matter the angle you're looking at the mini from. First, I'll look at the shield and analyze how light bounces on it. Having a metallic paint on the surface is really useful for this because it will show more accurate reflections than a non-metallic paint will. You'll see that, with the light hitting from the front and above, the top of the shield shines nicely and you can actually trace a straight highlighted line down the shield all the way down to the bottom. The center, being more dome-shaped, reacts more like a sphere, distributing the light differently than the flatter outer edge. So with all of this knowledge, it's time to begin. I'll start by adding some ivory to my gun metal. This will create a brighter color that will lose some of the metallic properties of the gun metal since we are adding a non-metallic paint into the mix. Hopefully the hand-painted highlights will compensate for us. Now I'll block out the highlighted areas, trying to go back and forth with both this mix and pure gun metal to get smooth transitions. In the edges, I'll extend the highlights further to the sides, which will add a lot to this metallic effect. 
I'll mix more and more ivory into the mix to get closer and closer to white, painting in smaller areas each time to increase the contrast and build up a smooth transition. For the final highlight, I'll go with pure white, which will push our highlights to the extreme brightness any nice and polished metal should have. I applied a similar technique to the sword, but didn't really care that much about having realistic contrast, rather trying to do it quickly while keeping an interesting result. If I hadn't been limited in my time, I would have spent a lot longer both on the shield and blade, even adding blues or other colors to give them an even nicer effect. After this step, we can see some super nice highlights that will be easily visible from every angle. I didn't care too much about painting the sides or back of the shield, it would have taken too much longer and it wouldn't have been as noticeable as the front. Now that the main details are finished, the mini is looking pretty good, but we still have some time, so it's time for step 4. Final details. The nose looks nice, but not particularly interesting right now. Let's fix that by glazing some dark vermilion onto the tip. I'll also work on the muscles, adding some sun yellow to my goblin green to make a nice and warm highlight color. The cloth will also get a bit of highlight. I'll mix some orange fire with my red leather base color and stipple this mixture onto the raised areas, adding a textured highlight that will hopefully make it look like some warm cloth or leather. The... ruffles? Is that the word for it? I... I don't know. Anyway. The ruffles at the upper portions of the cloth will get a simple highlight with ivory. I'll put a bit of paint onto my brush and dab it slightly to the area with the side of the bristles, and all of the raised areas will get highlighted. This way I'm taking advantage of the texture in the model to speed up the process. Consider it a similar technique to dry brushing, only not at all like that. After all of this, we just paint the base black and that's it. We have a fully painted goblin in just around 2 hours. I have to say, I'm super proud of this result. I normally take way longer to consider a mini finished, and while a part of me wants to spend another hour or so adding a ton more contrast to those muscles and other details, I think that this is more than good enough to put on the tabletop. This doesn't mean that this mini will be good enough for everyone, however. Different people may think this needs more work, and even diverse situations such as aiming for a tabletop standard versus a competition standard will change our own perception of it. Just think of what you are painting your mini for and try to avoid doing extra work, not everything needs to be perfect. In this case, I set my goal on painting a tabletop standard mini in as little time as possible, and while there's still a lot more to improve, I think that for that goal, this is definitely good enough. That's it for this video, if you enjoyed it, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. You can also find links to Jester Mask's YouTube channel below as well as his Patreon page and my own Twitch channel where I paint minis live. Take care and thanks for watching!